we have many inklings of a legacy continued and zero fucks to give. All that and more. Cody, push the star punch button. I'm pressing A as fast as I can. I bet that hurt like a motherfucker. My carpal tunnel's acting up again. Like a carpool or just like a carpal tunnel? Carpool. Like, a, like a carpenter? Carpal punishment. Carpool punishment. Carpal punishment. What is carpool punishment? Whenever you press the A button 300 times in a row to punch Mike. That's a lot of fucking pushing. Did you not see? <laughs> I had it all in the control, too. I did not see that coming. You didn't either. It's about time, his bitch ass. Digitally and figuratively and that's, physically. <clears throat> that's right, because uh, <sighs> it's been a long time coming for that motherfucker. Ever since the parking lot massacre that he did on us. What a dick. I know, right? What a fucking dick. And I mean, oh, I just thought about something. Mm. I got the Infinity Gauntlet when you kicked me down that fucking hole a few weeks ago. You still have it, yes. I do. So when he comes back, it's we'll over. Be, we'll it's be, over. We'll be ready. It's over for you, ho. We coming for you. We coming hard. Mm. Mm. Prepare thy anus. That's right. Welcome to episode 22 of the Super Media Brothers podcast. I am Midnight Agent Raw. And I'm Okami. We are here with a slew of video game news for you motherfuckers. Oh. Do that again. Oh. One more time. Oh. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> I just wanted to see if you'd do it again. That was funny. <laughs> so, we have um, quite a few fucking video games to talk about here. Um, indeed. In, indeed. In Nintendo. We've played, like, a shit ton of games our entire lives, but, you know, this year we got to play a few of them ourselves, like, you know, hands-on and some of the new shit that's come out, and then a lot of things that we found out that were coming out, and we're just like, holy shit, what are they going to think of next? Endless possibilities, That's my friend. That's right. So, what are some things that you've been playing lately, man? Well, let's see, the thing is, I have the Nintendo Switch, as y'all have been aware of for a while now. Mm-hmm. And I have come across quite a few games. Um, one of them being Splatoon 2, which I finally got my hands on since they got released. And I have I've been dabbling in it for a little while. I played the first one for a good... I want to say like three or four months straight. And I was about like in the 30 level, 35 level range. I had some decent ranks on the um, the rank battles that they had on there. It's really just as much as the first one was, to be honest. There's some slight improvements. There's some new weapons and new styles and modes to play and everything like that. The story mode's a little bit more oomph to it, I guess. Um the thing I like about that part the most is the fact that you have more weapons to utilize rather than just having the same weapon like you did in the first game, which is really cool. You can learn, you know, the roller, the dualies and stuff like that rather than having to go into the online part of it, which if you're not familiar with Splatoon, the the bulk of it is online only. Like you have more of the excitement, more of the joy, more of the, you know, gritting your controller feeling with the online gaming than you do on the single player game. So just to be a fair warning, you have to have internet mostly for this. Which was really cool, though, about the second one is the ability to go around people with your Switch and, you know, combat with them or fight with them, with them next to you out pretty much anywhere you want to be as long as you have Wi-Fi, basically. It's like real-life open-world playing. Basically, yeah. That's fucking awesome. But, yeah, I've been playing that for a little while, um, trying to learn the rank the ranks again and the ropes and styles and gaming and whatnot so so you you like it better than the first one i mean i know it plays almost like almost just the same like i played a little bit you know but do you like it more than the first one or it's a slight nudge higher i like the different weapon systems that they have like the dualies is basically dual wielding but with more of the dodging and rolling aspect because you have that ability now with the dualies instead of not having it in the other ones 
Also, I found out that the slosher and the umbrella are my favorite weapons now. So you literally have like a shotgun umbrella and you have a bucket that just flings fucking ink. Like it's like nothing everywhere. <laughs> You said the shotgun umbrella. I immediately thought of fucking Danny DeVito in Batman Returns when he fucking pulls his umbrella. Up. <laughs> I think that's where they got the influence from. Dude, what if Danny DeVito himself as the Penguin in Batman Returns was a character in Splatoon? Hmm. Tim Burton. As long as like they put Chris Walken's Christopher Walken's character in there with him, mm-hmm. the fuck. <laughs> What's I love it. Was that supposed to? He's like it's. It's supposed to give you a splitting headache. <laughs> a you mean a spin. splatting headache? A splatting headache. <laughs> it's a splagoon. Hey, you guys, splat. Wow. Wow. I win. Everything. Do I slosh now or later? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I have a switch as well. We're going to switch it up now. That's right. Um, a game that I have really, really enjoyed playing, aside from obviously like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey, has, has been Kirby Star Allies. Mm-hmm. I love Kirby. Uh, Kirby has been one of my favorite franchises in Nintendo's history. Uh, the first Kirby game that I ever remember playing was Kirby's Adventure, and that had been, and it still is to this day, one of my favorite Kirby titles. But uh, for the longest time, it was my favorite Kirby title until this one came out. This one is um it's the two it's the two point five D like platform style. Um you obviously you control Kirby, but the cool thing about this is like you have what they call um like friend actions. Like you get you can have up to four players on this game and every player can control an ability and say like <clears throat> say you want your entire team to have uh, like fire ability and everybody's got like a weapon or something you can actually share your ability to upgrade your weaponry in the game uh, anybody can jump in like if, if you're playing four players and somebody's like oh shoot i gotta take off like you know hit the bathroom grab something to eat any of that shit you can plop it on like computer the computer can take your character over everybody can can, can continue playing you can come back in join up uh They've got some other really cool features on there, like the friend star and the friend train, where you all like band together as one giant massive attack against like any kind of uh... the whole map. Dude, it's so fucking cool though. I fucking love this game so much. And not only that, but once you play through the game more, you start like unlocking the ability to like start with um, like certain you know upgrades and shit like that or if you want to do like uh you know they do like time runs or you know shit like that you do like time runs on the game uh it's got uh like rick Koo, kind from dreamland 2 uh gooey from dreamland 3 marks from superstar um all kind of characters in here and there are um bosses bosses like that kind of you know morph and like it's like it's it's like how the old Kirby games were. Oh, I thought I beat this boss, and it's like no, there's more. But holy shit, it's so it's challenging, and that's what I liked about this game, because I remember Kirby's Adventure for being a Nintendo title, like a, an NES title, was fucking challenging, and I felt I, I know I'm kind of rambling about it, but, but there's just so much to take in because like, no pun intended, this game is actually an adventure in its own mm-hmm. own right. Uh, my son, my son plays the shit out of this game. And he beat it before I did, and I'm just like... Well, that's what he normally plays when I come over here, so... He plays the shit out of it. <laughs> but basically, the the plot of the game is, like, probably not any different than any other Kirby game. You know, somebody comes along, fucks with Dreamland, gotta go, gotta Kirby, go fast. <laughs> Kirby being a cute little badass. Kirby being, like, a cute, angry badass. Like, when he just gets all pissed off and shit. Hi! He's such a dick when that happens too. He's like he bitch slaps you, whoops the shit. He's like, hi, he like mm. leaves your ass behind. And then but, he shits you out like a star, <laughs> literally star shit, star shit, star, star shit, shit Enterprise. Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's log. Captain, <laughs> Captain Kirkby. What have we become? I don't. 
My fucking head hurts. Ow. We're turning red with like just blood flow of laughter. I'm as pink as Kirby is right now. Right yeah. now. Right now. <laughs> but um Oh god. Honestly, this game uh, is probably just as good as like Kirby 64 and then like, you know, uh, I wouldn't go that far. I liked Kirby 64. I I liked Kirby 64, but I mean as far as like being like as far as all the Kirby titles go, this one is definitely way the fuck up there, like mm-hmm. with Kirby's Adventure at least. And then what was it? Kirby what was the one for Super Nintendo? Was that Superstar? Either Superstar or um Adventures in Dreamland or something like that. I think it was Superstar. I wanna say. I don't remember. My son's gonna kill me for not knowing this one. But Fuck n- you, knife culture. <laughs> fuck you, knife culture. God damn it. <laughs> for those who don't know, hashtag fuck you knife culture is a thing now. Thank you. Please yeah. contribute. <laughs> yes, please contribute. My God. But anyway, yeah, if you haven't played Kirby Star Allies, I'm trying to not spoil a lot of it because this it really is a fun game to play and discover on your own, so definitely check it out. Um, I love the shit out of this, and I want to swing it back over to you because apparently you have zero fucks to give about something. Well, before we get into that fucks, um, I wanted to throw in another Switch game. Oh, absolutely. Which I will have a bit of a precursor story to talk about. I first heard about this game on the Nintendo Wii U and I was not a big fan of the concept of two different styles of gameplay being mashed into each other or basically not really so much two styles but a certain style that I wasn't a big fan of and putting a certain title and license name on top of it. Um, I'm talking about Hyrule Warriors, the definitive edition. So I... You know, sucked it up and gave it a shot. See how everybody was talking about, and I was thoroughly surprised. For one, um, comparing it to Fire Emblem Warriors is a drastic step up from there. Fire Emblem Warriors was fun and all, but I think most of my appeal was the characters, not really the gameplay. So I kind of felt this distance between the game and me. So when I started playing this one, it literally had both the 3DS and the Wii U all into one game, and then I think it had some extra stuff on there. So if you're not too familiar with the Dynasty Warriors type gameplay, it's literally just hundreds of enemies on a single map, and you slaughter every single one of them as best you can. But on the flip side, there's strategy behind it. You have teammates that you come with that will take over certain parts of the map, certain you know forts and whatnot. Also, there are some of them that need to be protected, so you have to escort them to certain areas on the map without them being overdrawn by other characters. And then there's, you know, boss battles, which are pretty legit. So, all that said and done, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff you unlock, a whole, you know, interesting-ish story mode that you can play. What I found really interesting about this game was the adventure mode. The adventure mode has, I think it's like seven or eight different maps. And it's the classic maps detailed as each square. Like, the, for example, the NES Zelda, they have the map. Yeah. There's there's a grid. And each section is a um, a scenario. You have to fight. Like, you have to beat this many enemies within a certain amount of time or beat the two bosses within a time, stuff like that. Yeah. The map I'm on now, I'm only about like 30% done. That's how big it is. You literally have to like navigate certain ways to get certain items, you know, unlock new characters and whatnot. And then, like I said, there's like several other maps that go to uh, Majora's Mask for um, Termina Field. There's Cole and Island for um, Link's Awakening. There's Wind Waker map. There's um, Link's, Link to the Past map. I can't remember the name of it. And I think there's like two others on there. But they literally, they, if you beat the main story, there's still a shit ton of other stuff to do. And it's so engaging with the gameplay that I didn't think it was that much to me. Yeah. Now there's like more of a reason to play outside of just the normal stuff, which is really cool. So I, aside from my, you know, purist with Zelda kind of mentality at first, I definitely enjoy this game you're like, glad you I, gave it a chance i gave it a chance yeah. and now that i put some time and effort into it i've been playing like a couple hours a day of it and it's actually been pretty fun so hell yeah definitely definitely would check that out 
And uh, a game that I picked up actually years and years ago had yet another release for the PlayStation 4. It was released on PlayStation 3, and then they had another one. And I'm talking about Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, this game was probably, <clears throat> like, when I first when I first picked it up on for the PlayStation 2, was probably one of the most, uh, how do I put this? Very direct storylines I've ever seen in a game. There's, like... There are lit- there is literally nothing to do in this game except quest to find these these big motherfuckers, tear them down, and that's what you fucking do. Mm-hmm. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm, I was I could have just left it at that. Honestly. Into the game. Yeah, but God, the PlayStation Four render is fucking gorgeous. They changed the controls up a little bit, makes it a little more smooth to play. At least for it, for me, it does. The only the only thing that I didn't really care about was like a- even after the first one came out and then the PS3 and then the PS4 one, they they did not, you know, fuck with the camera. And I'm like, "Fuck, man. Like the camera is probably like the only aspect of that game that I had a problem with." But other than that, visually fucking gorgeous. Um if for any of you out there that haven't played Shadow of the Colossus, basically um you you start out and <clears throat> you you kind of get like an idea of what to do in the game but w- once you find the um the giants or the colossuses or whatever like you have to figure out on your own how to take them down there's no hints really given i mean they they kind of do you know give you hint but it's subtle you have to tear uh you have to attack weak points you have to climb the monster or climb climb the colossus you have to fucking you know basically like stab it in the head to take it out and i want to say i can't remember how many i think it's like 12 like there's a shit ton of them but you quest and you take them down and that is literally the entirety of the game is is finding these motherfuckers but the reason i loved it so much is because it's a challenge again like a challenging game but it takes you know really looking into it and be like oh how the fuck am i gonna take this motherfucker out oh i gotta stab it in the foot oh okay oh shit i gotta climb up the back of his leg stab it in the leg so it'll go down to one knee so you can climb the fur on the monster to get to the waist stab it some more climb up but the monster or the colossus will try to shake you off and if you don't know what you're doing or you don't like you know if you don't save your endurance enough or whatever it'll fucking throw you off and you may die upon landing so it's also a kind of um, a, a level of skill that you need to do this. Like, like I, I let Aiden kind of mess around on it. And he was like, "Holy crap, this is this is difficult." And I said, "Yeah, you know, you gotta really know kind of what you're doing and know that you're you're gonna have to think on this." It's a whole adaptation of skill that you have to acquire. Yeah, but it's again. I really enjoyed this game. I, I spent, like, at one point was spending about an hour and a half, two hours a day just kind of, you know. And and sometimes I wouldn't even go quest, like, to find the Colossus. I would fucking just free roam the area as far as it would let you go because you can only go to certain areas before it's like, no, 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 you got to re- you gotta divert and go this way or, you know, whatever. But definitely fucking check it out. Um, I, I kept hoping they'd make a sequel, but they, you know, we just we keep getting you know the remake of it. But fuck, this game's fun. And oh, here's the, this is the coolest part about it. So, um, they made it to where like you can run the game at 30 frames per second, like at 1080p, like on the PS4. But anybody that has a PS4 Pro can actually run this motherfucker at 4K. Oh, nice. Yeah. So the the picture quality is a, is fan fucking tastic. I, I actually saw a 4K demo of this at Best Buy on one of those big ass uh, Samsung curved TVs, and I was like. <gasps> My fucking wallet would hurt so bad if I could afford all of this shit. I mean, it's already hurting from you looking at it. So I mean, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong there. You were giving a freaking panic attack at this. No, point. my bank account was having a panic a panic attack, being like, "Oh my god, don't believe this drive, fuck." Because <laughs> if there's any, if there's one thing I will throw my fucking money at, aside from like equipment for this or equipment for music, it is video games. Mm-hmm. And. I know you have something else to talk about, and I actually just thought about another game I want to talk about after you get done with this one. Okay, time for the fucks. Um, <laughs> no. I've been following this game, I want to say, 
three or four months before it launched. And I finally was able to get my hands on it in December. And No, was it December? No, it was April. It was my birthday. I'm sorry. Um, I have officially fallen in love with Horizon Zero Dawn before I even played the game. And I'm going to tell you why. The aspect of the open world scenario I'm always a fan of because I played you know, Breath of the Wild. I played Skyrim or Morrowind before that came out. Um, and then some other games here and there. This one was literally no different except for the rendering of the map was phenomenal. And to give you an idea about this game, your style of culture is kind of a mixture of Native American Indians mixed with like a Viking kind of aspect. They're very primitive, very um, reliant on the land and what's around them in order to survive. You basically are these tribes that hunt down machines that are like animal shaped. So you have like horses and birds and crocodiles and stuff like that. So they take the pieces off the animal robot things and they accustomed to their weapons, their armor, their lifestyle in general. Well, you mainly play Aloy who grew up, you know, with a pretty rough upbringing. I'm not going to get too much into the story mode um, at this point. But what you do is you mainly quest and explore and whatnot, but you craft your own you know, ammo and resources and stuff like that. You don't craft the weapons, you know, which is kind of a off-putting thing. I would like to kind of make my own little bow and arrow set or a spear or something like that. Or fashion a weapon with Fa- my own bare hands. <laughs> Culture. <laughs> so... Knife Culture Club. Yes. Do you really We want broke the to first rule of Knife Culture Club. Me? Do you really want to make me cry? And we broke the second rule. Yeah. I'm sorry, continue. Mm, it's okay. <laughs> so, like I said, there's two aspects of the game that I really like. One is the combat system. It makes you really have to think, like, how are you going to overcome this certain scenario? You be on this path to your know, next destination, and then they have, like, a pool of um, snap malls, which are basically like the robotic version of cro- uh, crocodiles. And you can't get around them you have to find a way through them. Well, these guys, they primarily hunt in the water. So you have to figure out, okay, do I take one of them out? Do I try and sneak away from them? Or do I distract them with something else and make them go a different direction? Or, you know, whatever you want to do. But the combat alone keeps you so adrenaline rush, like it's unreal. Like you'll sit there and dodge roll all their attacks and then you think you dodge one major attack and then all of a sudden here comes a second wave of attack and you don't even know it's coming until it's too late and you're like, oh shit. And you get hit so hard that you have to like, okay, I got to regroup for a second. And then second of all um, is, like I said, the the scale of most of these creatures. There is a beast called the Thunderjaw, which is literally a T-Rex with Gatling guns and lasers. I, I, just, sh- thought of, <clears throat> I just thought about Austin Powers, <laughs> but except with sharks. Dinosaur here. Dinosaurs with freaking lasers, lasers are on their freaking heads. Which he, I think he does have one on his head, honestly. Oh but my god! Unstoppable. <laughs> imagine you a you know five foot foot five foot tall something female next to this thing, and you're literally like no higher than his uh, his ankle. Holy shit! Like you see him crushing trees in the distance, and you're like, how the fuck do I take this bitch down? Especially when I was earlier on in the game. I don't know how to fucking handle this thing. Like, he was literally just, like, stomping on all the other ones around him, and he was just, like, knocking trees down with his body. Like, just him walking around. So I took one on. I died the first time I fought one. Like, it's funny because even on some of the animals, they have weapons that fall off of them that you can actually take up and shoot back at them with those weapons. Like, there's a disc launcher that comes off of his body. You can shoot the disc launcher at him again. Is, is, is that in depth with the combat? Shit. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. But also, like I said, just the beauty of the rendering of the map, the character models, the 
voice acting is phenomenal. Like you really feel the emotion behind how they interact with each other, how they tell their stories, how they're angry about something going on or how they're paying from an experience that they've gone through. I feel like that's an art that's lost sometimes. Like, like the voice acting? Yeah, like in a, in a game because I feel like a game can be really awesome, but then the voice acting would suck or like the dialogue, any of that shit would suck. And I'm just like, God damn, no. Like, you know, but to have that and on top of a great game, absolutely awesome. I mean, if you just watch the trailers for it, I mean, you'll be sunken <clears throat> in like immediately. I, I will guarantee that. All the oh, time. Uh, yeah. I, I watched a trailer for it and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, because I showed you the beginning of the game, and you're like, holy fuck, this is just a cinematic. Yeah, it's a cinematic experience, like, through and through. And then you transition to the gameplay, and it's like literally no little change. Like, mm-hmm. there's no change at all. Like, that's how great of a game that these developers made this, you know? That's so. fucking awesome. But yeah, it's Horizon Zero Dawn. There is a DLC called The Frozen Wilds, which is fucking hard as hell. Um definitely get both i think it's called the complete edition if i'm not mistaken or the gold edition i can't remember what it is off the top of my head um but definitely get the bundle because it's so much more engaging to have all that opened up for you rather than just being restricted to the main game so i would definitely pick that up for the ps4 so it's definitely one of the few dlc packs it's worth the fuck to get oh yeah hell yeah do it big or go home yeah or just get a fucking job Bitch. And speaking of, that's... Speaking that's, of bitches? No, sp- yeah, speaking of bitches, no. While we were talking a while ago, I, I thought about another game that I want to talk about because it's a VR. <laughs> and you already know where I'm going with this. Greetings, human. Fucking job simulator. Fucking job simulator. Oh, so you have chosen the job of office worker. <laughs> fucking love this game so much. You were um, b- obviously in a simulator, but it's these floating robot. They look like old, like um, they look like old, like uh, computer monitors, like, like the you- old IBM monitors. Yeah, and they're just floating around with these like faces on them. Like it's green screen with like little black drawn faces, like like the f- black eyes and a black mouth, and it's just like you know, like just like you did. Greetings, human. Blah blah blah. So. You have the choice to be in a convenience store, an office, like in a cubicle, um, a mechanic shop, and a chef at a restaurant. And what's fun about these games uh, is that <clears throat> there's a narrative to follow with each level, but you don't really have to stick to it. You can kind of like free play and fuck around. You know, throw shit at people. You can, in the mechanic shop, you can like fuck somebody's car up beyond all recognition. Like, they're like, Hey, I need some new tires. Okay, replace the tires. And then when the task, like, checks off is done, you can just rip the fucking tires off and send them out with, like, no tires on. Like, spray paint their vehicle different colors. Pour fucking sugar in their gas tank. <laughs> this is why I'll never get hired at any job Put like a that. banana in the tailpipes. We're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Mm-mm. But what's funny about that same job is there's the sleazebot, which is the owner of that shop. That's and, probably one of my favorite aspects of that game. And one of the cu- one of the customers roll in and they say, "I got this coupon from a, a sleaze bot. He gave me this like a uh, free something. I don't know what this is, but I think you might know what it is." And he hands me the coupon. It's like, "Okay, human, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna give him the nice treatment, so he'll be coming back for more business." Then you just fuck the car up. Yeah, you take like his battery out, his engine parts out. You you. St- Put like sriracha hot sauce in his, <laughs> dude. The when when the uh, hippie robot comes up and she's like, um, I spilled my slushy in my car. Um, can you get me something to drink? And she hands you this big ass slushy. I poured like fucking motor oil in it and gave it back. And they, they and just, it freeze. Yeah, they just counted it. I was just like, oh fuck. Oh thanks. This will quench my thirst. And then when when you get done, like well in the mechanic shop, like when you get done. <clears throat> you can instead of pushing the ticket to like you know foot the bill up or whatever, you can actually look up and see that the money is just fucking sp- just speedily counting like just so fast. It's like tickering like super fast. Yeah, like literally reaching like hundreds of dollars in a matter of seconds, and it's like, well, you were kind of a dick. I think I'm just gonna sit here and let it get to like six thousand dollars, and then just hit print because fuck you. 
But also on that hippie chick, it's funny because in her engine it has like all the flower pot batteries and shit. Yeah. So you put all the nuclear reactors. That's what I yeah every time. <laughs> that's what that's, I remember I you go, watching me play that and doing that shit. I'm going all natural, so if you don't put anything that's like man made, that'd be great. All green and I'm like all green. Yeah, bitch, the, nu- the I reactors got green. are green. I got green for you, like funk, like nuclear reactor, green energy drink, like all kind of fucking bullshit in there. Which is funny because the energy drink, if you shake it up, it turns red and it's like even more energy. Yes. Just but, pour that in the freaking engine. is like, you know what I like to come out. You know what I like to do in the uh, convenience store level? Mm-hmm. I like to take, uh, put the, like pull the little, uh, the jumbo tray up and just see like what all I can make, like jumbo size, like the fireworks. And then like somebody I don't like, you know, comes in the store, just, you know, literally blow up the fireworks, then blow up the fireworks again in their faces. Mm-hmm. Oh, that zero I, gravity level. Oh, I fucking love that shit. I was about <laughs> to say, because while everything's like free floating in midair, like I took the fireworks and I was just shooting them off. And Richie was like, hey, try and hit the signs in the back. So I was just like aiming as best I can to hit the uh, signs in the back. I was like, okay, this is amusing. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it shit was hilarious, dude. Or like when you, when they come in and you can like reach across and like take their glasses or take their hats off and fucking wear them yourself. Oh yeah, like I took a dude's uh, monocle and top hat off and I put it on my head. I was oh, just you like, felt right at shit. home. Oh yeah, I was like, hello there, good sir. Would you like some lottery tickets? Where are the other bots going? Would you like a jumbo hot dog? Take a bite out of it and then give it to him. Yeah, a half <laughs> off. <laughs> like the old granny comes in. Oh dear, can you give me a hot dog? <clears throat> There you go. Vegas bot special. <laughs> yeah. $2,000. <laughs> For a fucking odd dog. Oh, no. The five finger uh, discount. <laughs> Which my version would be her punch him in the face. Oh, no you know. shit, right? You can't take shit from me. You can't take shit from me. But goddamn, man. Job simulator. PlayStation 4 VR. Or if, any VR, I think. But Yeah, if any VR, check it out. But if y'all can't afford the hefty price tag at least watch videos on it it's fucking hilarious especially jacksepticeye or markiplier like mm-hmm. watch two of the watch the two of them play this shit because it is absolutely hilarious and if that doesn't sell you on it and we can't sell you on it then you you have, you have no fun in your life you're a lost cause stay lost stay so lost my friend right so <laughs> on to on to something <clears throat> that just proves once again that nintendo likes to stay innovative as fuck. And by definition of innovative, we'll let you be the judge of this. So, if you've been keeping up with their news as a whole in the last, like, two months, they've released Nintendo Labo. And if you do not know what that is, imagine being creative with cardboard. It's an interactive fucking model kit, basically. You basically hook up your Switch to these kits that you can concoct into a piano, a typewriter, fishing rod, a fishing rod, a motorcycle, like handlebar. You can even do a mech suit in a way. And my first thought is how is this going to work? Not like at a sense of like how is this going to function, but how is this going to sell? Like, what about cardboard makes me go, wow, I should buy this. This looks fun. It made it look fun in the previews and the advertisement. But cardboard breaks. You All, have to be really careful with it. Right. Also, you you spend more time building these things than you do playing with them. Like it's like it's almost like a more extensive version of Legos. Oh yeah. So not is it just the cardboard being like, you know, cookie put together, cut, paste, you know, copy, whatever. But there are strings. And there's a lot of them, apparently. Because I've seen, like, the fishing reel has it. The uh, mech suit has it. The, the piano setup has it, too. And you have to tie it all in just right so the, the controls actually function the way they should. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm just so off about this like how is this going to be a thing well i mean it's it's innovative in a way and another you know a few things to take away from it honestly dude is like i like i like looking at this because uh, to me like uh looking at kids nowadays that you know maybe the kids have switches or whatever you know um to me it, it kind of encourages your creativity it encourages you to kind of 
um, use your imagination a little bit. Uh, I know that the kits have like really easy to follow instructions, and it might, might take a little time, you know, depending on uh, the level of difficulty to put together, you know, whatever you're going to put together. But uh, it, it's cool to me because, like, you know, being little, we, you know, we had controllers and stuff like that. But my God, like the, the possibilities are fucking endless now with the interaction, is as far as and just the way that it does because it uses the um, some of these things use the. Um, the functions in the controllers. Remember, we talked a few episodes back about the uh, the Switch controllers having basically, um, you know, the 4D, 3D uh, technology in them, like with the, the, the rotation, the gyro, or gyro, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes full fucking use of all this stuff. Um, I know for the piano, I think what it does is it um, it activates different vibrations in the controller, gives it different notes. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know, and then like. We sit here and we question it, you know, like one we question or like, you know, we wonder how it's going to work. But dude, like no bullshit when I say that, like when it got announced, like Nintendo's fucking stock price jumped up and it's it literally um, added about one point four billion dollars to their value and literally stuck them back into an area where they were more financially successful about 10 years ago. So something like this was a smart move on their part we might not get it yet as far as like physically get it or we may not quote get it mentally but it's a hit with people that i've seen that have it mm-hmm. um i do know it's it comes with a pr- hefty fucking price tag like some of these kits are expensive as shit yeah they're like 40 50 bucks for the kids yeah and the thing is is like when you buy something i want to say like you can buy something and you have the option to build like three or four different things from the one box that you buy, but you have to pick which one you want to build. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get a shit ton of money just because like, if you want more than one thing, you got to keep shelling out for it. And also you can decorate them too. So that's fine. You can make it more personable, which is really cool touch, but we'll see. I mean, I may eventually come across a kit and try it out and see how it works, but I see more of, parents like buying these and then they're playing with it for like a maybe a day or two and then they're just going to set it aside or throw it away yeah that's just my opinion i'm not doubting nintendo's creativity or their ingenuity with their you know products and stuff you know all for it but i have my doubts gotcha so well if you guys want to see the labo in action in a very comedic and cool way check out a clip of the tonight show with jimmy fallon because jimmy fallon in the roots and ariana grande actually performed one of her new singles with all labo instruments Hmm. did not know that yeah it's pretty fucking cool so if you want a cool example of that check it out now onto a game that you and i really enjoy that if I'm not mistaken, and if, if we're <laughs> if we're wrong, tell us we're fucking wrong. The Smash Bros. Switch title. Is it a new title? Is it a port? I don't think it's a port. See, I don't either. I want to believe because... First okay, all, okay uh, Skull, Scully and Mulder. <whistles> Sorry. <laughs> Watching the trailer, I highly doubt it's a port. Mainly of the skins for Zel- uh, Link and Mario are from the Switch games. Now, second of all, they finally incorporated Splatoon's Inklings into the game as actual characters. And that's literally the only thing we know is from the trailer. They're introducing the, the Inklings jumping at each other and shooting and whatnot. And then they have the icon of Smash Brothers show up. And they turn around, look at it, and then literally the whole fucking roster of characters is like in shadows. And then you see Mario's silhouette, and then Link's silhouette, and then it's that's basically it. Yeah. So, like I said, just from two points of that video, I don't think it's a port. I think it's a new title. Because, I mean, what else would it be besides like a new game? Because every system they've released... They've always had a different version of the game in the series. Yeah. So. I'm looking forward to whatever the story mode's going to be. Yeah, because they kind of left that out in the last game. It was more of just the the multiplayer aspect than anything. Yeah. Well, who do you want to see, like, big time? Like, if you had to pick, 
like any one or two like characters for the game. Like who who the fuck would you put put in there? Banjo Kazooie and <clears throat> Knuckles. See, those are great fucking picks. I mean, why the fuck not? I'm glad that they introduced the uh, Inklings from Splatoon. I'm not complaining about that. I have been waiting because they put fucking Sonic in Brawl. No, was it Brawl? Yeah, it was Brawl. Um, back on the Wii. But that was it. Like they put um, Shadow as an assist trophy, and that that was basically the extent of the Sonic franchise in that game. So when you put in a character that is you know a fighter, why not put Knuckles? He literally is a brawler, for one. Yeah. And then also, like I said, for um, Banjo Kazooie, Rare, you know, dissected from Nintendo went to you know Microsoft, and yeah. then a portion of them went to Playtronics and made ukulele. I would rather see Banjo Kazooie's characters come to Smash for the simple aspect that they were originally Nintendo characters, mm-hmm. but I see Microsoft still owning. Banjo Kazooie's license and stuff like that. Yeah. However, there has been talk that they may collaborate with Nintendo to be like, okay, we may input something into this new game. We're not sure yet. But if they don't, I can see them putting Ukulele as a replacement. I may not see it as much as other characters, but it's a possibility to me. That would be fun. Either way, um, fuck, I want to see the Ice Climbers, man back in action like i want to see those motherfuckers um i mean i know we got them in a dlc but it would be really cool if they actually like put ryu from street fighter in as a main character instead of dlc like just stick him on the roster um or hell um i mean bayonetta has to come back at this point because she's already popular on the roster yeah and in the games as a whole yeah absolutely and i i fully agree but if i I agree if they're gonna put if they're gonna put knuckles in there they need to go ahead and put tails in there as well they need to put the main three people from the sonic roster in there maybe have robotnik as a villain somehow part of the story mode yeah because i mean that could be like an actual thing like actually have the villains from all the games collaborate to end the heroes Mm mm-hmm not just some big badass baddie like controlling everything, but literally have the villains like have their moment in a way. That would be pretty cool story mode. Oh, absolutely. Either way, like I'm gonna buy it. Like they no. already have my fucking money. I'm gonna fucking buy the shit. So like, why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah, and you should too. God damn it. I told you I am. <laughs> I was talking to them. Well, you didn't say that. Well. God damn it, Cody. You need to be more specific. I'm trying to be more specific. I'm talking to YouTube motherfuckers that are listening out there. God damn it. YouTube people. Mm. <laughs> uh Shout out to Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna fucking hate us for life. I don't care. Yeah, that, yeah, you're you're right. You're you're damn right. You're damn right about that. So along with the upcoming hype train. I know I've got something that I've been like just waiting to fucking spew about, but I know that there's a game that I talked about to you. I, I, I don't think you even knew about it happening until I told you about it. And that was Okami HD, which I've heard they were making something, but I didn't know what it was going to be until you told me. And I saw that. And it's supposed to be, like you said, HD remastered version of the Wii version on the Switch, but I think it's going to be downloadable through the um the eShop, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So, but yes, I'm definitely going to be buying that whenever it comes available. Oh yeah, because I, I remember showing you, and you're like, "Holy fuck!" Mm. Like I, I remember that, and I was just like, "Oh man, Japanese yeah. and wolves, <sighs> and art." Yes. Also in the pipe is the Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2, which uh, Legacy Collection 1 was just released on the 22nd. And the second one comes out on June 5th. And not only are we getting the Legacy Collections, which are basically 1 through 9, holy shit, we are getting Mega Man 11. Yes. Like, motherfucker. Uh, It's about time. I mean, how long has it been since we got an actual Mega Man? Like, not 
okay, none of this battle network or these like adaptations that I didn't really give a shit about. When have we gotten a really good Mega Man game besides the X series? Yeah, I was gonna say like I think the last quote unquote technical fucking release was Street Fighter versus Mega Man mm. back in 2012, and yep. that was and that wasn't even what I consider a proper Mega Man title. Mm-mm. I think the last like dying version was like one of the originals of the X series. Well, they were supposed to have a Mega Man universe that came out for the 360 and PlayStation 3, like, but they canceled that back in 2011, and that was supposed to, if I'm remembering correctly, that was supposed to let people create their own levels and customize their own characters. But they did do Mighty Number no. 9, which is a spiritual successor. Okay. Same developers, I think, but it didn't go through as well as they had hoped because it was not up to par with the rest, the rest of the Mega Man legacy, basically. Yeah. But there's a trailer for this. There's some like, um, like it was in like an announcement, announcement trailer. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think they have an actual release date yet, but they are projecting it for the fourth quarter of 2018. So probably Christmas time. Yes. I know we'll be all over that motherfucker. Like flies on shit. You damn right. <laughs> I'm about to go off big time in a what, great way. What you gonna do? What you want? Bitch. Who asked you? <laughs> what you want? Ain't nobody talking to you. Ain't nobody buddy. talking to you, shut motherfucker. The fuck up. You shut up. Oh, don't you fucking tell me. They shut the fuck up is what they need to do. I'm telling you. But. The game that I am the most fucking hyped for is the Spider-Man game for the PlayStation 4. Instant nut. Thwipping everywhere. <laughs> Thwipping webs out my dick everywhere. Watch me thwip. Now watch, watch Aunt May May. <laughs> now watch me thwip. 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 Now, now watch, watch Aunt May May. <laughs> God damn it, that never gets old. <laughs> no. So, this was developed by Insomniac Games, and uh, I believe that's the same team that developed the Batman Arkham franchise. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I feel like... I need. I feel like I need. I need to look that up. He's going to need to look at that up. I am dumb. I am really dumb. I'm getting my shit mixed up. Insomniac did the Spyro and Ratchet and Clank series games and shit. So that's pretty fucking interesting. I mean, it still won't be a bad game then. Oh fuck no! And you know, I think the reason why I you know said hey this is kind of like this is kind of like batman is because it looks like like if you've seen any of the gameplay uh or like the trailer stuff for it it literally looks like um the over the shoulder kind of point of view like batman arkham franchise was Mm -hmm. uh it's a new story that is not tied to any existing comic book, video game, or film. It's going to cover both the Peter Parker and Spider-Man aspects of the character. Features like an older, more experienced Spider-Man. It comes out September 7th. Um, it's open world. It's in a modern day New York City. Third person perspective, obviously. You're going to be able to do like all the web slinging. There's going to be gameplay elements, which is kind of like... You get to use parkour, like actual real-time parkour. Peter, Peter parkour. parkour. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get to craft your own gadgets and make alternative suits. I want to see the iron suit. It's in there. Oh, yes. Oh, it's it's so in there. I, mm. I saw that I saw that they're going to put that in there. I was just like, oh, nut. <laughs> Seriously. He, he was wiping the thwip off the ground. Sorry, that's, that's right. the silence. Thwip your ass, motherfucker. So... You're going to have environmental combat, quick time events. There's going to be like some stealth stuff, exactly like Batman, which is fucking cool, but it's fucking, it's fucking Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, neck of the woods. Right? So I was reading up. In addition to Spider Man, Miles Morales is going to be in this game. Of course, Aunt May, Norman Osborne, and Black Cat. And they have a shit ton of villains that are going to be in there, like Mr. Negative, Kingpin, Shocker, and Taskmaster. So it's like, hmm, they're kind of going a little bit of. You know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And when I say an older Peter Parker, more experienced Peter Parker, it's not, um, not old, old. Like, because you think, when you think Spider Man is old, you know, you're like, oh, 30s, something like that. No, No, like he's 20s. He's 23 in the game. Mm -hmm. He has been Spider Man for about eight years. He's kind of settled in and being his, you know, protector of New York City. He, 
in early in the story of the game, he supposedly defeats Wilson Fisk, and then like a new gang emerges called the Inner Demons, who are taking over Fisk's territory. So he learns that this guy under the ego, Mister Negative, is you know that's who the main villain of this game is going to be, or at least one of them. So I got you, dude. I I can't wait because we really haven't seen anything about this guy since you know or you know anything since like comics so like his like his first appearance was in 2008 and it was like in the brand new day storyline so it's cool to see him get some fucking you know some airtime, airtime some airtime god damn it literally air. yeah while spider-man gets some fucking whipping airtime <laughs> mother whipping airtime mother whipping airtime mother thwipper but yeah i love the suit design by the way I love everything I've seen about this fucking game, so I am stupid excited about it. And then they are... they, Dude, we keep getting teased and teased and teased about Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, are you over this yet, or are you actually still waiting on it? Like, are, or are you just kind of like, just fuck off already about it? I mean, just bring it. Might as well. I mean, <laughs> like, Yeah, I mean... Like, I'm not going to sit there and be like banging on every GameStop door and be like, where's our Kingdom Hearts 3? Or go to freaking, like, you know, Square Enix or Squaresoft or whoever's making it. It's like, where's our Kingdom Hearts 3? And just, no. If they're going to make it, they're going to make it. Whenever it comes out, we'll look into it. Well, now they're saying fourth quarter 2018, and now they're talking about it's going to be playable at Square Enix's booth at E3. Oh? Uh-huh. Yep. So, literally... All of E3 is going to be everybody at that booth. Yes. Because I know a shit ton of people have been waiting for this game. E3 is going to just become Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3, yeah. KH3. Key 3. Key 3. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> he's learning. Oh, you're you're so welcome. He's, <laughs> he's learning. I'm learning. He's doing good. Key master. We have the keys you need. <laughs> Yeah, we got a couple more games to talk about before we we get the fuck out of here. Um, one of which being an entire trilogy, man, called the Spyro Reignited trilogy. What? How are you? How how do you feel about that one? I was actually explaining. Shout out to Jamie. Um, she had talked to me about it, and I'm just like, I didn't grow up with the PlayStation One, so I'm not as enthusiastic as I am about other systems and games. But I am all for, you know, reintroducing the older characters from the games and giving them like an HD remake or a whole new game as a whole. So this is a really cool idea. I'm on board with it. You know, everybody who's a fan of it, you know, they're lighting it up, literally, you know, pun intended, with Spyro. I think the success of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy getting remastered and re-released had a lot to do with this happening. So I can definitely see Sony bringing like the old library out they need to rehashing all the games and making them you know fleshed out like they would be in 2018 so. yeah because you're getting like Spiral the Dragon Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage and Year of the Dragon like I love those games mm-hmm. they were a lot of fun I, I remember playing them like you know 20 fucking years ago and it's just like my childhood is, is like poof here I am but I think everybody's childhood is gonna happen with this fucking gold mine of a release man and I'm talking about the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection Sure you can. Sure you can. <laughs> can I buy this? Sure you can. Sure you can. <laughs> Such weird, awkward silences after we make jokes. Other guys will just feed your lines, but I'll take you to Mickey D's. Please take me to Mickey D's. We'll be your best friend. All the Mickey D's. Mm. Mm. All of them? All of them. <laughs> Why to me? I'll take it to Mickey D's. <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection is basically collecting all the arcade versions of uh, the 12 fighting games from the whole series. It's going to be uh, the first one from 87, the f- all five iterations of Street Fighter 2, including World Warrior Champion Edition, the Turbo Hyper Fighting, Super, and Super Turbo then you're going to have all three of the alphas that were like Alpha 1, 2, and 3. Then all three iterations of Street Fighter 3. New Generation, Second Impact, Third Strike. 
So just please give it here. It's going to have bonus features. Like, of course. Of course, yeah. Like you're going to have like a museum for like concept art. There's going to be like the pitch documents about it, uh fa- like factoids about all the releases, a music player to listen to tracks across the whole series, interactive timeline that chronicles the series history, like character biographies, like background information, sprite art animations for them, like all kind of shit. But wait, there's more. No. Billy Mays here with new Street Fighter 30th anniversary edition. What if they put him as a fighting character? <laughs> oh my god. What the, what the fuck is he gonna... Dude, okay, if Billy Mays is a fucking character in Street Fighter, he's there's not gonna be, like, a sonic boom. He's just gonna throw a fucking bag of cocaine at your face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not sorry about that at all. It's just... You're just gonna hear... Huh! <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> I don't even have a joke for this, because it's so funny already. Like, I'm not wrong. No, you're not. <laughs> He's going to grab a sham wow and wipe his mouth off real quick. <laughs> sham wow. No, no, seriously though. No, it's called a sham owl because when he's done with it, he's going to hurt. No, like, but his, like, in his power up, you know, like when people, like, you know, oh my God, like they get, like, if he, it was him in Street Fighter Turbo, he would just crack open a bag and just be like, <laughs> watch me saw this car in half. <laughs> he would win the bonus round like that, dude. Yeah, just- he would. He will find some tool that he sold as seen on TV and be like, I'm going to cut this car in half. (laughs) Half a second. I'm going to cut this car in half with a new ramen noodle cooker. (laughs) With the slap job. (laughs) (laughs) One slap, you're going to love my nuts. Love my nuts. Love my... I fucking love that video. Of course, it wasn't Billy Mays we were talking about. No, that is Vince Offer. (laughs) <laughs> he offers an offer for you. That's right. I'm Vince Offer with an offer from you, motherfucker. Well, you'll like my nuts. <laughs> it sounded like you just said wipe my nuts. <laughs> with the sham wow. With the sham wow. <laughs> There's some sweaty nuts down there, man. I mean, you got to wipe them off. <laughs> Ring it out and try it again. <laughs> it absorbs all kinds of liquids, even ball sweat. <laughs> it ate ball sweat from Billy Mays. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ew. I'm fucking... I'm done. I'm done. Tapping out. Yeah, check out all those games. God damn it. Like, all of them. So, we still have stickers out there. So, if you have not done so yet and you would like to, go give us a rating and review on iTunes or or Facebook. Show us that you did it. And then... We will get your shipping information, and then we will send you a sticker. So, just fucking do it. Like we've we've asked. Right just now, go do it. Go do it right now. Right now. Right, right now. now. And by the way, the next time I send an audience research report around, you all better read it, or I will sack the fucking lot of you. Holy shit, Brenda! Are you fucking serious? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? No, no. Can you hey. handle up on this, man? Oh, oh, hey, oh. Where are you going? Don't storm out of here like that. What did I talk about with you? No, no. You told me you were going to be nice about it from now on. You've been working on your anger for the last six months now, and you were doing great. Don't make me send you back to HR. I fucking will. All right. Fucking Brenda. What is her deal? Maybe her deal is that she didn't have a deal like Billy Mays offers. She needs more cocaine. That's right. More but she can't because she's trying to be clean, Richie. I know this, but goddamn. She needs she's to get been sh- doing so good. Her life is a sham. Wow. Sham owl. Sham owl. Anyway, go do the thing so you can get a so you can get a sticker. Because we have a we have we have a sticker for you and you need to stick it to yourself or anything. Stick it else. to the man. Absolutely stick it to the man. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> or woman. Yes. If uh, if any of you guys out there like to watch Twitch TV for gaming, um, there's a good buddy of mine out there that is in Austin, Texas. Shout out to Fletcher. He is a Twitch streamer, and he I I know I think he's currently streaming on Fortnite at the moment. So if you guys out there want to go support him and support his channel, 
You can find him at twitch.tv slash Fletchy, and that is spelled P-H-L-E-T-C-H-Y. Fat as fuck. Or the P-H. Fuck yeah. So <laughs> keep kicking ass out go there, Go for it. Fuck yeah, go for it. P-H. P-H like a motherfucker. Mother P-H ucker. Fucker. <laughs> You're welcome. And next week, holy shit, have we got some news to motherfucking drop. If you haven't been following our social media yet, you probably should go check that out right now. Next week, right here on the show, we will be having a call-in interview with Matthew Caritas from Samurai Cop 1 and 2. Oh, my God. Right? Like... This is a big deal for all of us right here. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. We never would have saw ourselves get to this point. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. It's it's going to be a fucking blast. Um, Matt personally like told us, like, oh, I listened to you guys' episode on the first one, cracked him up, offered to, you know, call and give us some insight on everything. And, you know, I was like, holy shit, this is going to be insane. I can't fucking wait to do this. The dude is hilarious and... Fuck, I can't wait to talk to him. Same. Here. So <clears throat> be sure to tune in next week for that one. Um also Are we just gonna fling ping pins? Yeah, we're now? just gonna fling pins. Fuck these pins. So in other news. Pins. <laughs> so um social media. Facebook.com slash supermedia bros. Mm-hmm. Twitter.com slash supermedia underscore bros. Mm -hmm. Instagram.com slash supermedia bros podcast. Come look at our stupid pictures. Please. And also check out my music review of artists every week because I've been doing that for the past three weeks. That's right. And it's awesome. That's right. So go do it. Now. Please. Please go do that now. Please. We ask. We ask of you to do that. Very nicely. So, this has been Star Splattering Shadow Smashers. What? <laughs> I'm not sorry about that at all. Not sorry. I'm not sorry about that at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did meow. Right meow? Right meow. Right meow. Are you kidding me? I'm kidding me right now. This, like has been the, <laughs> this has been the Super Media Brothers Podcast. Until next week, I have been Midnight Agent Raw. And I'm Okami. Shades on. We're off.